friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Lawn Fawn's Llama Tell You and Stuck on You. So I stamped my llama out with Memento Tuxedo Black ink, since I'll be coloring him with Copic markers. And then I'm stamping out two of the cacti from Stuck on You. For this small round cactus, I'm using Lawn Fawn's Sage Leaf ink. And I'm doing a little selective stamping on the edge just to give it a little bit of depth. And then I'm going to stamp out two of the larger cacti. I believe this is a saguaro, or at least it could be. And uh, I'm doing the same technique, just stamping a little bit of extra two more times on the left hand bottom side to give a little bit more depth. It did dry back to be less noticeable, but I still think it added a little something. So now I'm going on to coloring in my llama, and for that I'm using E50, E51, E53, and E55. I'm starting with that E55 and picking my places to lay in some shadows. I'm just being very sparing. I don't want them to get too dark. I want them to be kind of a pale cream color, but I definitely want there to be a little bit of dimension and make him look more rounded and not just a flat image. So once I have in my shadows, I'm going to blend those out with the E53. I'm going to be a little bit more deep on the legs that are on the opposite side of the body since they're underneath and would be cast in more shadow. And then I'll continue to blend out with the E51. And you can see that I'm still sticking pretty close to the edge because I do want him to be nice and pale. So then last, I'm going to take that E50 and begin to blend that out toward the center. I'm going to let that fade off into white. And then I'm also going to grab my colorless blender just to soften the edge of that E50 a little bit more and help it blend seamlessly. I also got a little bit of that E55 on the blanket on his back where I didn't want it. So I just pushed that away with the colorless blender as well. And now I'm going to go back to that E51 and add a few little swirls onto his fur to make him look like he has a curly texture. And then I'll go in with my E53 and deepen those up. I wanted to start light with that E51 because I wasn't sure how much darkness I wanted for those, but I did like uh, a little bit of a darker look. So I added that and then went back over it with the E51 once again to blend it in. For his face, I'm using E40 and E41. I used E41 right up under his uh, fur to give him a little bit of a shadow and then blended forward with the E40 down on his muzzle, added a little bit more of that E41, and then gave him a rosy cheek with the YR01, and I used that for his nose as well. And then for his hooves, I just colored those in salad with E44 since they're super tiny. And then now I'm gonna work on his blanket. And I wanted to do something a little bit different. Rather than just color it solid, I wanted to do a striped blanket. So I've got BG13, YRO2, BG78, and B99. And I started with that BG78, and now I did the B99. Then I'm going back to the BG78. So I'm gonna do a stripe of that in between each color. Now that's the YRO2. Then I'll go back to the BG78 once again. And then my bottom stripe is going to be the BG13. And there was a piece of pattern paper in the paper pad that I'll be using that was an inspiration for that color combination. Now I'm going to color in the border of the blanket. And for that, I'm using BG72, BG75, and the BG78. So I use the BG78 up at the top where it would be kind of um, curved over his body. And then I'm blending down with the BG75 and the BG72. So that'll just help it look more cohesive since that's the same color as the stripes. And now I will trim these out with the matching dies. Although I did decide that I wanted to add a little cactus blossom. So before I run that through my cuddle bug, I just stamped that out with Lawn Fawn's Peachy Keen ink. For the background, I've die cut a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock with the Lawn Fawn Stitch Journaling Card die. 
And now I'm taking a cloud stencil from MFT and I'm sponging on both some sponge sugar and some dried marigold distress ink. I want to create kind of a sunset sky. So I'm just going to keep turning the stencil to get a different cloud border and then blending on the ink. So for this, the first layer I use just the sponge sugar. For this layer, I'm using a little of both. And then as I go down, I'm going to switch to just the dried marigold. So I have a nice kind of um, variation as I go down the panel. And I'm going to go down just one more time. And that one's just going to be plain uh, dried marigold again. And then uh, the bottom is going to get covered up with a border. So I just added a little bit of color to soften that up. To get a more rustic desert landscape, I used the Lawn Fawn Stitched Wave Borders and I cut that out of some craft cardstock. And now I'm sponging on a little frayed burlap distress ink just to add a little bit more depth to the color so they're not quite so flat. And I did a little bit more on the back panel and a little less on the front one. So I popped that shorter panel into my Misty and now I'm taking some Lawn Fawn Walnut Ink and stamping out the first part of my sentiment that says Llama Tell You and then has the little ellipses that lets you know that there's going to be a continuation onto the inside of the card. So I stamped that out twice to get a good impression and while I have my Misty yet, I'm also going to stamp on the inside of my card. I'm using Lawn Fawn's Sage Leaf uh, cardstock for my card base and the sage leaf ink to match for the inside of my card. So I just stamped down the llama again with a little speech bubble and the continued sentiment how much I like you. So it says llama tell you how much I like you which is super cute. And then on the inside of that speech bubble I'm going to add a little heart just so it has uh, something to fill that space in and I think that's super cute. So now it's time to assemble my focal panel. I'm going to adhere the taller wave border uh, in the back. So that can be some distant hills there. And then I've got the shorter one that I'll adhere in the front. And I'm just using some Tombow Mono Multi Glue and adding the glue kind of low so that there will be room to slip in my images. I want to tuck them in and really integrate them into the scene and have a lot of depth. So then I'm going to grab my two larger cacti and I'm going to have one over on the left side of the card, just tucking that down inside the first panel. And then the second one I'm going to add over on the right hand side and that one's going to get tucked behind the back panel. And I'm going to make sure that they're staggered at different heights as well just to add, you know, like I said, some more depth and dimension to the scene. Then I'll add the smaller cactus right in front, overlapping just a tiny bit. And I'll add a dab of glue to the top of that and adhere my cactus blossom over top. So it's going to add a nice, pretty, uh, more delicate pop of color into my scene that is otherwise very dry and desert-like. So it just adds a little bit of a floral aspect that I think is super sweet. The llama I'm going to add right above the word llama, centered right on that word there, so it just draws your attention even more to the sentiment. So this card is actually for our current Lawn Fanatics Challenge, which was to case ourselves. We're supposed to be inspired by an older card that we have made, and this is the card that I was using as my inspiration. So I'm going to pick out some pattern papers and I can tell from the photo that I need three different prints. So I really liked this floral. I thought it had some cool tones to it. And then this peach one also went really well with that. And then all I need is a little bit of a salad. So I'm going to trim down one of the stripes on this aqua and white striped pattern paper. So I'm going to go ahead and die cut these out. I'm using the Lawn Fawn Stitch Rectangle Stackables for the large floral and also the peach piece. And then I just trimmed that down so that it actually would make enough for two cards. But uh, I just kind of cut them down in the middle. I believe it was at the two inch mark. And by the way, that back of the peach print was the one that inspired the blanket for the llama. 
So I'm just going to glue those down, make sure that they're nice and straight. And then this aqua piece was trimmed down with the stitch scallop borders. So I'm just going to butt that up to the floral piece and kind of cover up that seam with that. Then I'll grab my focal panel, which I've added some Scotch 3M foam tape to the back of. So I just peeled off the release papers and I'm popping that down in the center of the card. And I decided not to add any embellishments. I've kind of been on a no embellishment kick for a while. I kind of like the more simple look, especially since there's a lot going on with the different patterns of the pattern paper. So there's another look at the inside, and that is going to complete my card for today. There's another example of the card that I cased. So I think that's a great jumping off point to go ahead and look back through some of your older cards and use that as new inspiration. So maybe you guys can try that next time that you're having a hard time coming up with a new card design. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel if you'd like, and you can also hit that notification bell if you wanna make sure that my videos always end up in your feed. Here's two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy, so hopefully those will tide you over until next time. Until then, have a great day. Bye-bye.